Okay, now time for a little pet shop clack and vlog once again for the second time, technically speaking. This one should be quick because we're getting a ton to get in the week. So, today's episode would be Two Pets for Two Pets, written by Tom Minton. Go. Okay. Go. Yeah, well, this one's pretty simple. Okay, go. Basically, it's Pet Appreciation Day over at the school and everyone. Everyone required? I don't I don't think go. So. That'd be weird because that some people don't have but anyway. No no, you get like a reward you get to make school if you participate in it and of course the big one to participate in it to go they adopt they adopt being chinchilla for the day with the plan to take some more finish afterward and black thing like that we try to convince the big kids to keep them. You know, can't we are doing the bad ring to begin with. Um and they're got, at the start, it got up a thing where Blighty Pack and Control Peggy to pet to take to there. And the pet she picked in a consequential. The plot could be pretty much a game about what two pet she picked. Because she could pick the new one Mika because of a good plot. In which we had a plot where for like, um, where, you know, Kunio and doing magic and like, doing art. And Kunio would think, oh, you couldn't possibly do my magic, your art, and stuff. Oh, you couldn't do my art, Kobe. But and then and Kunio find out just how hard. Part in, um, I guess I'll talk about the, the plot first. Um, eh, it's okay. Uh, mostly, I think a lot of the comedy in the episode comes from an attempt to paint, and a lot of which are increasingly over the top and funny. And I like the way he keeps ruining the shop no matter what happens. Especially like the joke where he comes like going and you know, all of the paint and uh, going like, You're lucky I look green, everything. <laughs> yeah, that can get a joke. So what kind of leaves me cool is the conclusion where, in the end, Kunio realized, like, okay, I'm not a great at painting. So we apologize to Minka. You're probably not that great at magic gear. But she got ah, never mind, she ain't great at magic. And that one quick gag, and then quick gag, me or she got isn't good at magic. And in the end, Kunio learned, well, Kunio learned coming, but Minka learned absolutely nothing. Yeah. I understand I'm supposed to do, like, a twist on the plot, but it's like, and make it clear learn that when you go terrible and make a uh, gaming, you know, it would be good for Mika to learn legal. Mika be good match, it would be a whole lot of games. <laughs> it's like, I mean, Mika got my performing about it, I suppose. <laughs> but, eh, I did get a good copy in that plot, so I can forgive it. <laughs> you know, um, I definitely find the main plot to be way more interesting. Um, I pointed out in my book a little pitch up post thing about the whole theme of pets and the human stuff and how up so cleverly had it and this up so all about education and getting two people who completely build it to the whole idea to, you know grow to like them because they found someone that they connect with and they're keeping relevant and um and it's a really interesting way to tie into that particular theme and this is one of the episodes that show you know how a big can work through the story you know and how even their Bichina can stay and tap in the episode of still having Grono in a way. Because they learn that pets can't be useful and good if they have to wait to them, and that, that can work. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, animals in general sort of, you know, can be weird, so, you know. It can act way to, you know, and they're, in the cool episode, they're funny, you know, not hilarious, but they're, they're funny. Speaking of which, Cash and Velvet are, I, I like them, they're, they're funny. You know, that they're big, are like mini biscuits, but I like that, it, you know, especially the fanny geek ones. Mm. You know, they, they are, well, whole, they're pretty likable, which is, I don't bother me, they have not appeared that much. I mean, at the end, they have, yeah, you know, a lot of cash involvement, but they had a cameo in the King Feed finale, and then they came back up in a short, which is amazing, by the way. <laughs> that can't. That's short, probably the most time I've got to get the couple code. But guys from that cameo, which I'm like, I missed something. And then, of course, that comic, which I pointed out, that, which had a callback to the couple code, which Francois mentioned being a chinchilla owner because he mentioned that in the couple code. I didn't mention that because like, that callback or that on the comic made up for callback. Being in a callback, were two in the couple code. One where they mentioned that Ruckle had been to school before, training places. And, of course, the big club for two for one count. Two for one. The thing. Both of them got came out of this one, by the way, so. It can not look right awkward for me. Fur, but of course he was Sylvia, because we'll call that. <laughs> um, now he's digging a song 
a, a, a anachronistic song, like a rap or rock song, and you got perfect up. But, anyway, the cup putting it. The cup could definitely cool off pretty much the whole, like, idea of the big kids forming a relevant cup. It's not a whole lot of happening in the episode, and, and in the main plot, it's not a ton of jokes, particularly some quirky thing that happening. All the jokes around around Big King Catch and Relic. So if you don't really like, you know, if you don't find your liking either of them pair, then you might not hate it because we do, you know, grow a bit, but otherwise, but, so you're more likely to like the Cup Code if you like them, and, and I do most of the time. And Catch Velvet are hot on time, more like you feel kind of like, <laughs> You know, like, you know, they're fun, you know. Max will make me like the Cup Code. Like, well, well, that King Free Fame are having this interesting story to play out, and the whole episode become good because of that story. A lot of that was Yeah, I've up an arrow before this one, um, the general one. Um, <laughs> If the internet or production order messed up for the whole show, especially in King of Free. That's like hacking to an internet order, uh, but King of Free didn't get production order, so. Oh man. King of Free production order, but only two apps were flipped, so. You know, and apparently them airing out order was an to begin with. And King of Free has no different King of production order, from what I understand. Well, may have damn King I'll find out. They may have to rerun the King of Free on Discovery Family, so. Yeah, but you the Vicky Death is an interesting episode. It's not the whole hilarious of gripping, but there are jokes that work and there's interesting element to it. And I think it's important not only to show two really cool characters and and show how Vicky can still be the Vicky while have being having like a Billy to him in some way, you know? They can still be the Vicky at the end of the day, but still have feeling like they're grown. I think some of them writers don't feel like that and that's why you get like your turn, but that can neither here nor there. <laughs> Go. So I wish Captain Velvet would have a bigger role again, but you know, if they they appear at least one, so and they gang in a short, in a short, I got a cute short actually. Um, because of the ending. Um, go so yeah, it's a good episode. Not one of my favorites, but you know, it's not good. It's not episode, like come back and watch again over and over, but you know, that every once in a while, you know, like to come back to. And I like what Tyler reminds me of a code and I don't like where he go. Like a clever Tyler though. No go. Yeah. I think with one of the shorter ones because we're gonna hold out the K, but I can come some meaningful stuff, I think. Go so, not one of my favorite. I don't know how much people like this one, but I like it. But if you like people like the kids buy that one can catch me velvet. Go. Yeah, it is a solid up code. Not one of my favorite. Again, in a couple of kind of weak, but not that bad. Even if that joke at the end just kind of, eh, you know, go about like a dragon down that much. Just kind of, ain't got a good joke. Go, there you go. Bad to get for the week. And, yeah, never break next week, from what I understand. Yeah, it must be like what we did in Team 3. We're hopefully not going back to hiatus. Um, so there you go. Go, fuck next week. Pick out next week, episode. Forty three. That probably means me into Okay. Okay. Yep, Shanghai hygiene. Ooh, knocking in on another vacation episode. Didn't I just mention that Red Big Rem chat earlier? And that it, no, I'll come on that next week. Go, so I'll see you next week for some... Well, you know what? Oh, wait, do I click on that button? Um, bye.